everyone. It is super bright and sunny in the greenhouse today. I keep my big floppy hat in here um, because I have a tendency to constantly wear a baseball hat with a ponytail, but this hat is awesome because look, you can just pull your ponytail right through the open top. I usually do even still will wear like a little bandana or headband or something like that on top here. Um, but yeah, it is a beautiful day in the greenhouse. I wanted to show you some of the things I'm working on, I've been out here an awful lot lately and just kind of, you know, walk you around and show you some things. So the other day, I thought it would be really nice to have a little kind of hanging basket in here. I've never had a hanging basket in the greenhouse before. So what I did was, you know what, let me turn the camera around. Ah, that's better. That's my comfort zone. <laughs> um, I found this little terracotta hanging basket and I didn't want to buy anything at the moment. So I kind of foraged around in my own garden to see what I could find. And I know I had a lot of pansies. Well, there's some fungus gnats flying around too, but I had a lot of little pansies in bloom. So I dug some of them out of a container I had out front. And then just some little strawberries here on the bottom. And look, you can even see a little bud coming in there. I thought, how pretty would that be? to have some little strawberries and little pansies. I know it'll be a while before I see any fruit on that, but I give them a little bit of berry tone and some flower tone on my flowers, some citrus tone, all the tones happening on my citrus, on my lemon. Uh, you can see my little daffodils are really starting to pop up now that I showed you from the last video. I had this turn it away where this was getting a little bit more shade and this was getting a bit more sun. So you can see how it really, uh, picked up on that and got the message that this side was going to bloom faster. So now I have it here basking away in the sun. And I did just pot up those geraniums. I think I mentioned in my last video, I decided to do the whole row here of geraniums up top. And it's really making me so happy. I picked up this really cute lantern the other day. I am a Facebook marketplace junkie and this was $35 for it's cast iron. This is super heavy. It opens up and I got uh, a moving flame, like the outdoor moving flame candle, one of those Luminara ones. I've used those for a long, long time and they work great. So I got one of those. They have a little built-in timer, but for $35, I thought that this little pagoda with look, look all the flower detail on it. It's so pretty. I'll probably end up putting that outside once the temperatures warm up a little bit. But I've got sweet peas started here. Nothing coming up yet, but I did just do that uh, a few days ago. So I expect I'll see sweet peas coming up anytime now. And it always amazes me, you know, these are pansies from fall. If you plant pansies in fall and you live in a warm enough climate, um, they'll come back for you. You know, I, I just think it's amazing. I do that in the landscape in little pots. I trim them back and they just all come back again. Um, there was something I wanted to show you and I don't remember now, ah! but, um, yeah, my little, my little terracotta hanging pot here, I think looks so pretty. Um, let's look around outside. Those are some bulbs I forgot to plant. I'll probably try and force those pretty soon. Uh, but you can see I've got all kinds of daffodils and tulips and everything. It's, yes, it looks like a mess right now. Um, but that's, you know, we're, we're transitioning into the pretty stuff. Um, I do have my garden hose along the back there that <laughs> hooks up to the sink in the greenhouse. And it's black. And every time I see it, I think it's a black snake. Okay, because we have those here. Uh, I've been doing lots and lots of weeding. You'll see little piles of weeds everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. I need to really get down in here and start clearing some stuff out. I did plant um, some snowdrops and I have little crocus coming up. These were the crocus. Remember I did the bulb lawn? So you can see them kind of, kind of like peeking up the squirrels kind of ravaged them last year, but that was my lawn last year, and now it's part of the bed. I don't think it grow anywhere, but you can see here, I've got, what is this? What is this? What is this? This is bunny damage. <laughs> the clover's not out in the lawn, not yet for them to keep away. So I've got some little bunny munchies going on here on my hookera. 
goodness, but I have to clean out my bird bath. Look at that. I've got some winter sewing going on in here. Matter of fact, let's take, let's take a peek in there. If I can not step on any of the bulbs that are coming up. Let's see if we got anything germinating yet. I did this just a couple weeks ago too. Okay, so nothing yet, but I have a whole bunch of stuff in here. Snapdragons and Canterbury Bells and all sorts of things that hopefully, fingers crossed, will be making their way into the garden. Oh, and this. Look at this. It's so orange, but not to worry. <laughs> this happens a lot, especially if you have a boxwood placed like in the middle of your bed without a whole lot of other evergreen or any kind of protection. Uh, so it's just basically, you know, winter bronzing and, um, it'll go away even though it looks like carrot top right now. It'll go away and crepe myrtles are doing nothing right now because crepe myrtles aren't supposed to do anything right now, <laughs> but lots and lots and lots and lots of cleanup. You can see I've been coming out here. I got to get my little bag and throw this out, but I've got a lot of weeds. I've been cutting back some of my herbs, my alliums, kind of just really prepping things. Um, Mark and I are probably thinking of painting the shed white, like an off white, not a bright white, but an off white, and then making the door green, like a hunter green, kind of maybe to match like the shutters there. So that's my vision. Um, we'll see. Hopefully get something going here. I want to start on it though before the roses bloom and I actually have to prune on those a little bit more because they're pretty gangly right now. I have a hard time trimming this rose because it got to a point where it's all wild and just like twisted and discombobulated with no real uh, framework to it and I kind of leave it that way and it looks okay but at some point, I should probably do some really, really aggressive pruning on this and try and revive it and make it look a little neater and grow a little better so it's not all gangly and rubbing and intertwined because that's not good for the health of your rose either. But look, I've got lots of weeds to pull. The key is to get them out. Like we've had a lot of rain, so if you can pull weeds out when the ground is soft, that's a good thing. I've got a lot of weeding to do. I just missed the root there, so that's probably going to come back. But I've got a lot of weeding to do. Um, even if you can come along and get these before, you know, when you see these flowers, you want to get them out because that's when they're going to drop seeds. But I've got weeds all throughout the gravel, as you can see. It shouldn't be anything too bad to just pull up by hand. Uh, I've got my garlic back in there. I've got to clean my fountain out. A lot of the herbs here did make it and survive the winter. So I've got some oregano. Look at my parsley. I could just trim that up and it'll look good. This rosemary is dead, obviously. I don't um I don't do well with keeping rosemary over winter outside. However, let me show you this one. This is that Chef's Choice rosemary I've showed you guys before. Like a culinary rosemary. It has a higher oil content that makes it really good for cooking and I do cook with this one but I just shaped that up a little bit because it was looking extra gangly that one is a good one it's really good really good it was very uh fresh and green and looking good even through the winter I did just pull some things that were dead out of this pot here you can see just you know it's that time of year when you're just kind of assessing everything and and weeding and you know before before the show begins <laughs> but that's it just a little update um i've got a lot i want to work on i am having some uh, seeds starting in the basement right now this poor boxwood and the two on either side here last year got um boxwood leaf miner i had to think for a minute and i really want to remedy that naturally if i can i'm hoping that this year it's not a problem, but you can see, um, yeah, it was it was definitely damaged last year. If I could find a good example to show you. Um, this one was actually quite worse, but look. You can see on the leaves there, the little, the little bulging. They enter in through the flesh of the leaves and then like little worms inside munch around 
and basically eat the inside of your leaf out and which, you know, skeletonizes it and makes it pretty unsightly. So there are organic ways. Look, it's not, it's not a good thing. There are organic ways to deal with this. I just need to look into what those ways are. I think that this must be damaged from last year, actually. I gave these a pretty good haircut. Um, I've read someone say you could put even like the fungus gnat traps, the sticky traps, and that that helps. Um, but really, it's, a, it's not a good thing. It's not a good thing. It's not a good look. <laughs> um, yeah. I really hope that that's not an issue this year. And then, oh, my um, olive tree was out all winter, much to my surprise. Um, I just figured I would give it a shot and see how it did. And it did, it's doing really, really well. Um, it's struggling a little bit right now uh, than it wasn't before because what happened was, since I have it in the basket here, it sent out roots and began to root on the ground, obviously. And when I pulled it up to move it, you know, I dislodged some of its roots. I don't know where it's going yet, somewhere out here. But that that kind of shocked it a little bit because I took it from its little cozy spot and just basically ripped it out. But I have been trying to train this one into like a little, like a standard single ball. Um, and it, it's, it's getting there. Tell me it looks good. <laughs> It looks good inside the greenhouse. Maybe eventually I'll pick those lemons. I'll definitely have to make a lemon picking video. <laughs> but just this image, it just makes me feel so happy and so warm and just contented that the season is upon us. And um, yeah, I hope you all are getting all psyched for the new season. So this is good news. Next week, my neighbor's awesome. And she agreed to have someone come and take a look at this. I believe it's a silver maple in her backyard. It was here when she moved in and it's just a very big and intimidating. And from what I understand, silver maples are very weak. You can even see right here, see that mark? That's from where a very large branch snapped off of it a few years back. And now of course with the greenhouse here, it is a concern because something that was a small tree is now a big tree. But this limb here is almost a separate tree. You'd have to see it to understand. Um, but it's like, you've seen multi-trunk trees. This is kind of that, but if you look at it, it's, I'm not gonna go peering over her fence because that's rude, but it's almost an entire separate tree coming up from the bottom. So we're gonna have someone come out Next week and take a look at that and hopefully get that whole big limb. You can see how big it is. Remove, there's some flies in here. The vents just popped open. Um, you can hear them buzzing around. Oh, is that a bee? I think a bumblebee in here. Um, but you can see how big this whole trunk is and it canopies over the whole top. There'll still be, you know, I'm a tree hugger. I don't want to do anything unless it's necessary. But with this breakage, and from what I understand, uh, I really don't want to take a chance on this one branch. It's just, it's too nerve-wracking nerve to me because it's so large that I feel like if that whole thing snapped, because you imagine it goes all the way down, it's coming this way. It's something not good is going to happen. So I'll keep you guys updated on that. Oh my goodness. I just wanted to show you guys my hellebores. I bent down, knocked over my coffee, spilled it all over some important paperwork that I have. Then the FedEx guy came and my dog started going off. So, okay, I'm back. <laughs> I had to show you my hellebores. Look at these. Look how absolutely beautiful. Oh, I just want to look at every single beautiful one of them. Look at this one. This is a new variety. I don't have names, you guys. I'm sorry. I just call this like my hellebore patch. And I, you know, if whatever I grab, I plant in here. And I don't really keep track of the names. I probably should. Look how pretty. I'll get better with it. I can see some tags sticking up in the bottom there, but they are really, really beautiful. Just so gorgeous. very muddy in here we've had a lot of rain look at that 
just so pretty. And then I know I made this little knot garden thing last year, but you know where I'm going with this. I might change it. I don't know. You guys that have been here since I had my picket fence, I'm thinking about putting the picket fence back. <laughs> I don't know. I'm so confused. Um, what I'm going to have to do is draw something or go into Photoshop. I do a lot of work in Photoshop. I'm a web developer, so that's like my thing. But I, you know, when I'm not on the computer, I don't want to be sitting on the computer doing stuff. But for this, I will. <laughs> um, I'm thinking of making a picket fence somehow coming from maybe like the greenhouse area, that like where the boxwood is, maybe coming this way and returning around with a large opening so that you could walk through to the vegetable garden. I don't want to completely obscure it. And then I do need, see where this wonky trellis is here. I do want to maintain that walking path with the stepping stones so that I can come from the shed straight through to the greenhouse, walk through an opening. I don't want to block myself. I've, I've been blocked. I don't like being blocked. Um, but I think, you know, a, cute little picket fence here might might work out really well I don't know let me know you guys in the comments I'd love to know what you think I mean of course ultimately I'll make whatever crazy decision <laughs> I feel like but I am curious what do you think about revisiting the picket fence situation and don't worry about the boxwoods and everything I will create some other magical adventure with them they will not be leaving this property I will I will come up with a beautiful plan we're talking fence specifically. Yes to fence, no to fence. I'm on the fence. <laughs> and then this whole area. So this is real life gardening. Does this look like your gardens? I bet it does. Piles of stuff everywhere, right? Because, you know, that's, that's, the, that's where we're at right now. These boxwoods are looking terrific. May make some changes in this area. I did bring the urn a bit forward at the end of fall. I need to level it out a bit because it, what was happening was it was very close to the trellis there. And then the hydrangeas completely swallowed up the urn and you couldn't even see it. And I think the urn is so pretty that I want to see it. So we brought it a bit forward. I do need to level that out, like I said. But I'm really, really pruning some things back. One thing I heavily pruned back, you can see some branches here. This was a Pugster Blue dwarf butterfly bush. When I tell you this thing was four feet tall, close to four feet tall, enormous. And what was happening was it was blocking my other plants. Last year, my powwow echinacea, which was a gorgeous, huge swath in this area, was completely engulfed by the butterfly bush. Because why? Because they're not native and they do want to spread and they can get aggressive and all those things. So use caution, even if you're getting a dwarf variety, because sometimes you just don't know. Um, yeah, I have other ones that ne that have not gotten this large. So maybe it was just a fluke. I, I don't know. And then this area is going to have a pretty big change, a pretty big change. So you can see how the tall fence drops down and returns. We need some more privacy. I've talked to you guys about this before and not just from the neighbors, but from the street, from just you know, I want to be back here gardening and don't necessarily want to be a focal point. You know what I mean? We pull in the driveway here and I want it to be more like you're entering a secret garden. So we've already purchased matching fence panels like these that are going to return in the front. Imagine how much these boxwood topiaries are going to pop against the white and look so good. A larger, wider, taller arbor and a more substantial gate. And then I'm imagining that possibly I might put some sort of trellis like those maybe on the outside panels of the fence. I apologize for the noise. There's planes and trash trucks and everything right now, but something like that on the outside panels of the fence where I can have my clematis, because I do have clematis that, on either side here, uh, or roses or what have you growing on the front of that. So more private. I want more privacy. I'm entering my private <laughs> privacy phase. 
<laughs> you know, I mean, everybody wants some privacy. So that's where I'm at right now. I think that these against the fence panels will look lovely. I think vines growing along the fence panels will be lovely. And then of course I've got my roses here. This is Claire Austin, which I love. And it's, you can see all the new growth coming in. So I will very carefully somehow uh, remove this, this lovely rose from this arbor and get it onto a new arbor. This area, I'm still figuring out. I'm still figuring it out. This whole driveway area, I'm really, you know, it's just not hitting me right yet. Um, you know, you know when it's right, you feel it and you know it. I'm not feeling it yet. Uh, and it's not because I'm impatient waiting for the plants to grow. It's because I'm unsure about a lot of the configurations of things. Like I said, the fence, you know, what to do there. Um, vegetable garden, I love. I love the placement of it. I think it's perfect in tying the two structures together. I love it. Um, but yeah, I wanna maybe paint this white, paint the door green, just really kind of refresh things. Give it a little facelift out here. Love the patio garden uh, and the shape of it. I love that I brought the plants close to where we sit. You can see that patch there. That's from where the thundercloud, uh, thundercloud plum that we cut down last year due to all the disease and everything. Um, that's, that's that little patch there. But I did just pick up a bag of Dutch white clover and I will be overseeding the lawn. And yeah, let me know what you think because <laughs> I can picture, you know, just a little bit of fence here. I don't wanna, again, I don't wanna block off the entry. So it would have to be away from the greenhouse so that I could have a straight run. I, I don't wanna block myself and have to like be pigeonholed, you know, in that corner and then have to walk this way to walk through an opening to get back into the greenhouse. I can't have that. So it would have to be like in front of it, maybe a little return with a basket or something hanging on it, but open and then an opening here so you can walk into the vegetable garden and then return back around and meet up with this arbor. I'm thinking of it. I'm thinking about it. We'll see. Um, and I'm actually considering putting, ooh, be right in my face. Ooh, I must be sweet. I had to be right in my face. <laughs> I am wearing bright yellow, uh, yellow sweater today. Um, anyhow, uh, that's where I'm at. I'm thinking of maybe putting these obelisks uh, back where they were last year. You know, you change things. You can change it back. You can change your mind. The beauty of gardening. And that concludes as the garden turns. And please stay tuned for more magical, mysterious, what will happen next <laughs> garden adventures. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so here's the state of my kitchen right now. I use my Butcher Block Island to start seeds because it's a whole lot nicer being in here than it is uh, being in my basement. For those that never see my kitchen, here it is. I've got cups and, and mess all over the place and that's okay because we live here. This is not a show home. This is not a, <laughs> a model home. There's lots of little, little people and big people living in this house. <laughs> so yeah, I start my seeds here. Um, I just got these this year. I like them. Yulia at Why Do You Garden suggested these. Um, I think I, I'm going to use these for years to come. Do you know what I like about them? First of all, they're see-through, so you can see the roots. I like that and see the root health and development. Yes, they're plastic. I understand, but I plan on using these for many, many years. And, you know, so that's my, that's my hope there. And they have little individual humidity domes. Very nice. You can open and close and the little tray that they go in. What I like about these is they're small size. So let's say I wanted to start 12 geraniums of one color. There you go. Before, I used to have random pots all over of, you know, this and that and the other thing, all in one big, huge, long tray. And then, you know, things get can get mixed up really easily. If you're me, things will get <laughs> mixed up really easily. So it's nice. And then I'll bottom water these, put the little bit of the water in here, mist them. I did pre-moisten this soil, but it's feeling a little dry now because yesterday I started and then I got sidetracked. So I'll have to re-moisten that soil before I, um, before I start any more seeds. But let's go into the basement where I'm not gonna show you anything except for the plants that are coming up right now because it's, it's truly an abomination down there, but let's go. So I started these just this past weekend, Saturday and Sunday. 
and you can see already. I mean, it's amazing. It's amazing. I've got in this tray here, purple hyacinthine, purple hyacinth bean vine, which I, full disclosure, walked over to my arbor where there was dried up, you know, dried dying vines from last year. I, I found a couple pods that looked pretty good and I just popped them in to see what would happen. And guess what? That's what happened. <laughs> They're growing. And then these are little geraniums. Look, just from Saturday, today's Friday, so less than a week. Actually, these both trays were up two days ago, three days ago. So it's pretty good. Are these wet or dry? And then on top there, that's just a little bit of vermiculite um, just to, just to kind of keep them from damping off and um, keep the moisture level in, in check there. And then what is this? This is some profusion double white zinnias. Those are some of my favorites. I don't know if I see anything else coming up. Hold on. Nothing up in these at the moment. Um, I've got some Canterbury Bells. Oh my gosh, I love them. And just a few other things. Um, but I'm just going to use this one rack, I think. I start too many seeds. I do. And then I don't know what to do with them. I have a small garden. It gets out of control. So I'm really, really trying to conservatively plant and, and uh, start seeds for what I know I love. And what I know that if I don't have space, I can plant in my mom's garden and not just have this big chaotic mess and pressure of trying to figure out, you know, where am I planting all this now? You know, the gardener wants all the plants, but sometimes the space, not so much. I don't have the room for all this. Um, so, yeah, I'm trying to be much more, you know, careful in my planning. Anyway, that's just a little peek in my basement grow room area thing. <laughs> this is my other side <laughs> where I used to sow tray upon tray upon tray of seeds. This right here, I'm starting to get some dahlia orders in. So I am, and I know it's early, starting these now. And I'm going to start some, some dahlias early in pots. I've never started them this early, so it will be interesting to see what happens. But there's that.